Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to make it so that we have input on the arrows that can make it so you can move this capsule in different directions or at least so we can detect the movement. The first step in order to do this is to add a new input node and set it up so we have the input action of horizontal and set it to analog and then also set up the input action of vertical and set it to analog and then press OK. Alright, now let's go ahead and make sure that the input is enabled for this and we can test it out to see how it works. So I'm just going to move the game over here and zoom way in on this and then press play. I just need to make sure I'm pressing on that again and let's get rid of that. And now I'm going to press on the right arrow and then you can see that the value goes up to 1 and so that's the right arrow, so that's positive in the x direction. And then if I press on the left arrow, you can see that goes to negative 1. So that's negative 1 in horizontal, the x direction. And then I can press up, and that's vertical, and that's going up to 1. And now if I press down, that's negative. But remember, we can set this horizontal and vertical to mean whatever we want. That's just coming from the input manager actually. And so we are going to set it so that vertical is associated with the z value and horizontal is associ associated with the x value because the y value would be up and down, sort of like for jumping, not really making much sense for just moving around in a scene. So how do we combine all of this to make a actual um, movement system? Well, what we can use is something called a vector. So let's go ahead and add a vector into the scene. I'll go down to vector, and then we want to select vector 3 right here. And what we can do is we can attach the horizontal to the x and the vertical to the z, like I mentioned before, and also have this enabled. So what is a vector? Well, all a vector is is a mathematical uh, concept that has a direction and a magnitude associated with it. So if I change this 0, 0, 0 right here to 5 and 5, so now there's a multiplier of 5, and remember this value can go up to 1 and all the way down to negative 1. So what that means is this vector will have a two-dimensional directionality associated with it. There is also the y-coordinate, but that can only reach zero. So it can really only span, span two planes instead of three, actually, right here. Now we have our vector, but it's just set up internally here and not really doing anything. What we can do is we can go ahead and add a function and then search for draw ray, like I already had here. And then we can go down to the second one, and then we can see the one that says vector3 start and vector3 dir. And this dir just means direction. So those are the input parameters for this specific function. All right, let's click on it. And if you can guess, the reason that we made this vector 3 is to use for the direction, because we want to know what direction our character is going to be moving in based on the input we gave it. And then the last thing that we can do to make this work is just add a start location. So what's the start location? Well, we want to start it at the capsule, which is using this and then transform. All right, so let's talk about this for a little bit. So this is associated with input capsule. As you can see in the scene right here, if we want to access the location of the capsule, we need to use this as a node. And then when we connect it up, it'll give us some different choices. And what we want to choose is the position, which is automatically chosen, as you can see over here. But transform has more than just position. It has local position, Euler angles, all kinds of different things that are useful in different cases. But right now, we just want the most basic property of it, which is just the position. Then I'll go ahead and make sure that this is enabled. And I'll also make sure that this is enabled as well, and then name this drawing the ray. So the reason that we created this ray is so we can see what direction our character is facing and turning because in the future we will change it to make it so that we're actually moving in those directions. 
Okay, now all we need to do is test this out. So I'm going to move the game over here and I'm going to add the scene over here so we can get a good look at this. All right, now when I press play, I need to go over to the game view and then I can press right and up and you can see that the ray is being created here. So the vector is being shown to us in the scene view and also in the game view, but it's easier to view from the scene view. So you can see here, I'm just clicking on the right arrow right now, and you can see it's moving in the positive x direction. And if I only click on up, then it's going in the positive z direction, which if I just click on this again, you'll be able to see these values more clearly. All right, so if I click up, you can see that the vertical is just one, and then the horizontal is just one. And if I go in between, you can see that the values are changing. Now I can go in the negative Z direction, which is associated with the vertical, negative one, because that's attached to the Z. And same thing for negative on the horizontal, which is associated with the X value here. Awesome, now we have a system where we can at least right now sort of aim in a certain direction. Thank you all for watching and hopefully you've gotten a basic idea about how vectors work and how you can draw more information to the screen.